This video is a continuation of the discussion from the previous video. If you have not watched Every Day the Same Dream Part 1, you will need to watch that, and there will be a link in the description to that video. Before we continue with the argument, let's do a quick recap. Previously, the cyclical nature of the game was brought into light as being a system of labor. The particular aspects of that labor were revealed through the Marxist philosophy that a laborer works that he may keep alive. He does not count the labor itself as a part of his life, it is rather a sacrifice of his life. With this interpretation in mind, we analyzed each of the three subsets of alternatives to labor, finding that all of them failed to both stop the cycle and maintain the player's life. Now we have to look at the last run. All that is left to understand is the final cycle of every day the same dream. In this cycle, the player finds themselves alone. The wife, boss, co-workers, and even cars no longer manifest themselves. The player has become isolated from the entities that push it towards labor and the act of labor itself, which was embodied in the other workers. This is the one great deviation in the cycles. When the player makes it to the balcony, they are eventually greeted with themselves leaping from the railing. This new run is certainly an end to the cycle. There are two reasons that this is the case. First off, the elevator lady states that after the five alternatives to work, the player will be a new person. There is no reason to believe that what the lady says is wrong, especially seeing as finding the five alternatives has caused such a massive shift in the world. The other reason is that the game ends. It must be remembered that the cycle of labor was literally unending. The cycle would go on for as long as the player chose to sit at their desk. Given that the game does not repeat instead going to the title screen, the physical repetition within the game, which was also the repetition of labor, has ended. With this in mind, there is one question left. Why did this moment end the cycle? It is not an act of suicide, as the player has already committed suicide in one of the five alternatives and failed to end the cycle. What brought about an end to the cycle was the act of viewing their own suicide. In some way, this action has caused a transcendence beyond labor. The reasoning behind this may be able to be understood by looking at another philosopher, Heidegger, and buckle up because Heidegger is a complex one. In his work Being and Time, Heidegger expresses the idea that all people are thrown. This, what Heidegger calls thrownness, is the idea that people are born into systems that have been started by others and will be continued by the person. In other words, every person is working towards goals that are not their own. Their goals were created by the prior generation. However, there is one act that a person is not thrown into. The act of death can become manifest to the Dasein that, in this distinctive possibility of its own self, it has been wrenched away from the they. The term Dasein is simply Heidegger's way of saying person, literally meaning being there. The act of death is a thing that can only be experienced by the self, and for the self alone. In this sense, death is not historical, that being that it was created or started by another person. Given that death is the only thing that a person is not thrown into according to Heidegger, death is a person's own most possibility, or the only thing that a person does independently. By combining both Heidegger and Marx, one can see that by confronting death, the player has stepped beyond the confines of the system of labor. The wage laborer is not capable of leaving the whole class of buyers unless he gives up his own existence. Thereby, the laborer is tied into the machinations of the buyer, that being the capitalist class that hires workers. Their very existence is tied to the buyer, so in order to actually escape the wage labor system that constitutes the cycle, the laborer must find a way to reappropriate their own existence. In order to do so, the laborer must escape the buyer. The last scene of Every Day the Same Dream places the player in the position of escaping the buyer. By confronting the player's own death, they come face to face with the only action that is their own, and also distances themselves from the other. 
The other in Heidegger's terms is not any specific other, but instead every other. Thereby the player distances themselves from the buyer class by considering their own death. Do note that it is the consideration that separates this scene from the alternative of suicide. By not actually acting out the suicide, the player is not actually participating in the denial of labor, but is instead viewing an entity from beyond the system of labor. Through the consideration of the player's own death, the cycle is ultimately broken, allowing the player to escape the cycle of labor. This is certainly a bleak ending. It only becomes more so as there is not much that allows the player to consider what could happen beyond the cycle. The player is left in limbo, not being able to determine what an escape from the system actually implies. Personally, this seems to be an intentional touch. Every day the same dream is not looking to give the player answers, but instead to ask questions. While we have analyzed the brunt of the game at this point, there are still a few more esoteric points that I wanted to bring attention to. The first of these is the use of color throughout the game. For the most part, the game presents itself through a grayscale that works to impress the concept of monotony and uniformity in the game's world. In the same way that color and grayscale are visually opposites, they are also thematically opposite in this game. Color represents that which is non-uniform and also interesting to the player. The first and most important colored entity is the television. It is flashing brightly when the player first leaves their bedroom. This is by far the most colorful entity of the game and thereby being expressed as an object of immense visual interest. Despite the color, the television ends up being a completely useless entity. Turning off or leaving on the television does not affect the cycle. This seems to be a statement about the value of media. Media in this game is an entity of supreme interest to the player, but is also of no value to the player. The other entities that have color are the natural elements of the game. The leaf is a vibrant orange, and the cow's nose and udder are a noticeable pink. The common thread between the colored objects in Every Day the Same Dream is that they are all purposeless. The return to nature ends up having no meaningful effect on the cycle, only being a short reprieve from the trudge, and the television does nothing at all. There is still one color we have not discussed, red. The color red shows up in multiple places throughout the game. It is present in the alarm clock, the crosswalk symbol, the whiteboard, and a few other places. Every red object interacts with the player in some way. Note that this is in contrast to the other colored objects, which the player simply acts upon. It is strongly implied that the player is woken by the alarm clock at the beginning of each cycle. Thereby, the alarm is the entity that gives the player momentum and starts their experience. The stop sign literally stops the player, preventing a move from beyond the beaten track. The whiteboard is a representation of the inner mind of the player. Initially, the whiteboard appears to be a line graph of the company's earnings, showing a solid profit. As the player engages with each of the alternatives, thereby trying to find a path other than labor, the line graph drops. While it is literally showing company profit, it is a metaphor for the state of mind of the player. The more that they attempt to escape the cycle and fail, the more crushing and depressing the system is. With that, we come to an end. Certainly there's more that could be discussed within this game, but what has already been said is comprehensive enough for the time being. I hope that these videos revealed a bit more about this strange little game. If nothing else can be taken from every day the same dream, it is the value of holistic design in a game. Nothing in every day the same dream was accidental, and every small detail built up to a larger picture. Other games have attempted such approaches, but it seems that this game has succeeded if for no other reason than that it was small enough to make such holistic design easier. Before we leave, I'm sure that at least one person out there will ask, why such a Marxist-heavy interpretation? The game is clearly saying something about the corporate work system, but the real push towards Marxism as a reading of this game comes from the company itself. On their webpage, Mole Industria puts a blurb on each game. For every day the same dream, it was a game about alienation and refusal of labor. That takes sound bites straight out of the Marxist playbook. Anyway, with that, thanks for watching and, as always, enjoy the rest of your day.